Hey everyone, my name's Jessie. Welcome back to my channel. Today, let's do my April TBR. So if you don't know how I do my TBRs each month, each month I have 10, usually 10 books to select from, and five of those books I pick myself as books I really need to prioritize that month, and the other five books I leave up to chance by using my Roll the Dice game. If you haven't seen my Roll the Dice game before, I will link a video down below that kind of goes over it, but essentially it's a way to randomize my TBR a little bit, my physical TBR, so that I get through books that have been on my shelves for a while and really need to be read. So last month, the only book that I was not able to get to on my TBR was House of Sky and Breath by Sarah J. Mass. I ended up doing a little bit of mood reading at the end of the month, so I didn't end up getting to this sequel that I have heard a lot of mixed, mixed reviews on, so I'm very intrigued still to check it out for myself, but it is going back on the whiteboard for this month's Roll the Dice TBR, so we will see if I end up rolling the dice for it, and if not, it will just have to wait, because there are other books I really want to get to. Let's start with the five that I'm definitely planning on getting to this month. The first is The Bone Shard Emperor by Andrea Stewart, which I've actually already started, as you can see. Uh, I loved the first book in this series, The Bone Shard Daughter. <gasps> so, so good. If you like hard magic systems that are really unique, if you like really different world building, like very unique world building, I would highly recommend this one. It follows a couple different points of view in this empire where islands are suddenly drowning and you have this bone shard magic where every person has to give up a bone in their body and that bone is used to create these creatures in the empire that does its bidding. It's fascinating, fascinating stuff. I love it. Um, so I'm very excited to be finally reading the sequel. Um, I know that the third book in the trilogy, I think, got a little bit delayed, so maybe it'll still come out this year, hopefully. But if not, that's okay. I'm willing to wait because this series is awesome. The next two I have to talk about are both some more sequels, um, and that is Age of Legend by Michael J. Sullivan and Age of Death. Uh, I will go into my thoughts on this series. I read two books in this series uh, last month in March that I will talk about in my wrap up, but needless to say, I am obsessed with this series right now and I am really, really looking forward to getting through it like as soon as I can because I'm just so obsessed with these characters in this world right now that I don't want to be out of it for too long. So I definitely want to get to both of these for sure this month. And then the last sequel that I have on my TBR is one of my most anticipated releases of the year, and I'm just so excited that I have this in my hands and I can read it, and it's Fevered Star by Rebecca Roanhorse that I was so, so kindly sent an arc of. Oh my goodness, I'm so excited. Black Sun made my top favorite fantasy books ever of all time when I read it back in 2020. I love how unique this world is. I loved the characters. I just loved the, the mythology of this world. It was amazing. So I'm really excited. Uh, I know a couple people have already been reading this and I'm hearing some mixed things, but I'm just, I'm just so excited to get back in this world, get back with these characters. It's been way too long. So this is one that is definitely highly anticipated for me. And the last one I have for the for sure books that I'm for sure getting to this month is The Book of Cold Cases by Simone St. James that was also so, so kindly sent to me by the publisher. Um, I am a big Simone St. James fan. I've read two of her books before, Sundown Motel, The Broken Girls. I really enjoyed both of them. The Sundown Motel is fantastic. That was, I loved that one. Um, the Broken Girls was still very good, but I love The Sundown Motel. And I think that this one has similar vibes uh, where it's gonna be like a paranormal thriller with some maybe ghostly vibes in there. I love the way Simone St. James does dual timelines in all of her stories and the way she kind of interweaves and connects the two timelines together is really cool. Uh, so I've been hearing great things about this. I know Mara uh, has recently read it from Books Like Woe and she loved it. So she's got me very excited to read this. I can't wait to, to dig in because I'm a big, big fan of Simone St. James's writing. All right, so those are the five books that I definitely plan on getting to this month. 
None of them are too, too big, so I'm actually going to expand this month's TBR a little bit. Usually there's just 10, and I leave five books up to chance. I'm actually gonna roll for seven books because I'm gonna up the ante a little bit and um, add a couple more books to this month's TBR. How I typically like to set these expectations for myself is I'm not actually planning on necessarily getting through every single book, but it gives me a lot more options to mood read from. So depending on my mood, I might want to pick up some of these sooner rather than later. So by rolling for a couple more books, I feel like it'll give me more ability to mood read. So we're going to roll for seven. We're going to have some fun. So without further ado, let's get rolling. Let's start with the sequels that I rolled, which the first one was Soul Music by Terry Pratchett. This is the third book in the Discworld Death Collection. And overall, I've been having an okay time with these books. I always have so much fun with Terry Pratchett's writing style and with Death as a character. I think both of those things keep me hooked and keep me wanting to read more of these books. However, I haven't loved the plots of the books, so I'm hoping as I get farther and farther into this collection, I'll like the books more and more. And I'm just really excited to get to Hogfather. That's the book after this one, so I feel like once I read this one, I'll be like really excited to get to Hogfather because that's death as Santa Claus, and that just sounds amazing. So this one I don't know much about. I'm assuming it has something to do with death becoming a rock star? I have no idea. We'll see. I'm just, I'm just here for the ride. The next two sequels that I rolled, I'm very excited that I get to close out this trilogy. It is Home and The Night Masquerade, both by Nettie Akorfor. These are books two and three in the Binti trilogy. I read the first book uh, this past month in March, so I will talk about that book and my thoughts on it in my wrap-up coming out next week. Um, but needless to say, I liked it enough to continue on with the series, and I'm very intrigued so very excited to be picking up the rest of this trilogy. I am still waiting for my physical copy of Home in the mail. And yeah, this is a really fascinating sci-fi trilogy of novellas. So I'm not going to say anything more. I don't want to spoil my thoughts for, for the wrap up. The next three books I rolled were actually all starts to new series that are on my 10 series that I really, really want to start this year. So I'm very excited that I'm getting through this list pretty quick. Uh, the first being Demon King by Cinda Williams Chima. This is the first book in the Seven Realms series, which is a really popular and well-known YA fantasy series that's a little bit older, um, which is probably why you don't hear as many people talk about it as much anymore. But I've heard that this is fantastic. Why fantasy in recent months and years has been striking out for me a little bit more than usual, so I'm curious to see if maybe this older YA fantasy will be a little bit better for me? I don't know. I've heard a lot of people love this, so I'm just excited to check it out and see what all the hype is about with this one. The next YA fantasy that I have is Blood Air by Amelie Wenzel, and I had heard so much about this when it first came out, and it sounded so, so good, but again, in recent 
memory, <laughs> I have just not been having the best of luck with YA fantasy. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping that streak will end with a couple of these YA fantasies that are on my TBR. Cause I, I again, thought that this sounded fantastic when it first came out and I just haven't heard a ton about it since then. So hoping I love this. And the last new series that I'll be starting is The Twelve Kings in Sherakai by Bradley P. Bolo. So this one was actually one that I had meant to read last year, kind of in the middle of last year. And I had started it and got it about 100 pages in. And while I was liking it, I was just in a place in my life where I just had my baby and I was so tired all the time and just could not focus on this epic fantasy series. So I just thought in my head, you know what, I'm gonna put it down. I'm gonna come back to it when the time is right because I feel like I will love this one, but I just was not in that mental space to like take on an epic fantasy series. So I feel like now I'm definitely more in the mood for it. I'm definitely more well rested. <laughs> so I feel like I have the mental capacity to process all of this. So I'm very excited to get to it because I, I think that I'm gonna love this. I really do. And when I put it down before, I was excited to get back to it when I was in the mood for it. So very excited that this is on this month's TBR and hoping I absolutely love it because I've heard so many people talk so highly of this series. And then the last book I rolled for is a standalone fantasy that has been on my physical TBR for a very long time now, and that is Elantris by Brandon Sanderson. This is another one that I started a couple years ago, and I maybe got 100 pages in and put it down once again. I don't remember why. It was just like one of those times where I just was not in the mood for it. Even though it's Brandon Sanderson, which I usually have a really easy time with, it just wasn't the time back then when I tried it before. I remember liking what I was reading. I remember really liking this world where kind of a plague took over and you have these like living dead. They're zombies, but they're not. They're not the type of zombies that you think of, but it's like a living dead city. Elantris used to be this beautiful city and now it's populated with the living dead. And so there's this prince that lives in Elantris and you're following his perspective, but you're also following the perspective of the woman he was betrothed to, and it was just really interesting. So I remember liking it. Again, I don't know why I put it down and never came back to it, but now is the time. Now is the time. Hopefully I will get to this on this month's TBR because I do think I'm really gonna enjoy it. I know that people have mixed feelings on Elantris. Some people love it. Some people say it's Brandon Sanderson's weakest. It was his first published book. So I'm, I'm just curious to check it out. I eventually wanna read all the Sanderson books. So this is just another one that hopefully I can get to very soon. So those are all of the books on this month's TBR. I'm very excited about this month's TBR. Did you see any that you are interested in in checking out or have you read them before? Let me know in the comments down below. I would love to chat with you guys. Thank you all so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you'd like to, and I will see you all in my next one. Bye. Oh.